So hi everybody, I'm Noah Clark with uh, ursacam.com and I'm here today with Bob. Hello Bob, and we're backstage at the Black Magic booth. Um, you know Bob, I gotta tell you, I had a whole list of questions for you, and in true Black Magic style, you guys, I have a whole new list of questions. <laughs> How many products did you release today? Uh, 38. 38 new products. Yes. Um, you know, four years ago uh, was, I believe, the first time you guys released a camera? Three. Three years ago? Yeah. So three years ago, you guys weren't a camera company, and now every year you steal the show. Well, yeah, I mean, three years ago we introduced the, uh, the first camera because we thought like we could make a, an acquisition device that worked better throughout the whole workflow in terms of, you know, not recording proprietary formats, you know, record ProRes Go or RAW that works with other, you know, uh, other devices. And, and so that was part of it. And then it just kind of morphed from there. It was like, oh, well, that seemed to work pretty well. What can we do next? You know, make a smaller one, make a larger one. And, you know, and, it, and it's grown over the years. But And we keep adding new models that sort of augment the other models instead of replace. And I think that's one of the things that uh, I've been getting a lot of feedback. Where it was like, oh, that one kind of fits between here and there. And I think that's what you want to do. You want to build a family of product, not just uh, continually obsoleting some one product. I agree, I agree. So we are ursacam.com, so let's talk Ursa. Sure. New sensor, mm. version two. Tell us about it. Well, so, well, there's two new sensors. If two you new sensors. It. The, the sensor, version two of the 4K sensor is what we, we, we talked about on the last Friday where we uh, announced an upgrade to go 150 frames per second on the in HD. And, and that's in a window to 1080 mode. Yeah, and then there's 120 frames per second in, in 4K. But at the show, we announced a 4.6K camera. So for, from now on, we've been forward, there's a 4K version and a 4.6K version. So the 4.6K okay. is the upgradable sensor for any of the existing persons. Great, so let's talk about upgrade path. I know I've had a lot of questions on the site. I'm an Ursa user. I'm interested in the, the, the new sensor. How do I go about getting it? This morning, um, Grant mentioned, you know, he wanted to see if we can get, to the, get it to the people who are using the camera first. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Well, right, so we're gonna take orders for upgrades. So the upgrade price is $2,000 for the um, EF uh, mount and two and a half K for the uh, PL mount. So we'll take orders for upgrades, and as the new sensors become available, where do we want to ship out some of the uh, uh, upgrade sensors first? So it's a turret and an up and a sensor all in in one, and uh, so we'll start rolling those out as soon as we can. Okay, fantastic. And there'll be a video, I'm, I'm assuming, on how to do that. Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit trickier than 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 you know just unscrewing four screws and I also think that a lot of resellers that will sell the upgrades will probably step up and say hey you know we could do it for you that kind of thing for those that aren't uh, you know comfortable but we are gonna do a video for I mean are we talking a clean room here or just a a clean living room. <laughs> a clean living room, I think, is going to be fine. The, the, the key is to be able to pull off the old one properly. And Grant was describing it the other day. And he, as he said, he goes, it's not difficult. It's just if you didn't have a clue, you might do something wrong. Whereas if we tell you, you got to you know, do it from the bottom and you know, and make sure that the thermal pad's on that we give you and you know, those kind of things. I, I just think it just needs some ex explanation. It's not quite you know, obvious uh, how to do it, but it, it is easy to do. I understand. Okay, so let's talk about some of the capabilities of this new sensor. I noticed the new native ISO is 800? Yes. So and it goes to 1600? Correct. Okay, so we're talking possibly better low light performance. Well, absolutely. You have 15 stops of dynamic range, so that in and of itself will, uh, would, would provide that. Uh, the original 4K sensor, which is 12 stops of dynamic range, was, you know, in the even in the original housing, you know, we, we said it wasn't a low light sensor, and, and when we moved it into the Ursa, the body of Ursa was ready the you know future sensor wasn't so we used the current sensor to get going and since it was an upgradable uh, uh, product you know we figured people could use it for a year and then maybe upgrade when when the time came and the time has come yeah. we well, appreciate that and then um, does the new sensor address some of the issues that some of the that some of the uh, the problems that the old sensor did had uh, Specifically, the, the black hole sun problem. Yeah, so um, we did some. Sam we have some sample footage online that shows you it shooting the sun and no problems. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now let's move on to what we're what we're calling Ursa Minor, which is not here. Yeah, the Ursa Mini. Ursa Mini. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so Ursa Mini uh, is basically, you know, we. we the original camera, you know, the original design of the camera, that built the 2.5 and the 4K, was supposed to be a handheld camera, right? You know, that Grant really? says, well, you know, I just wanted it to be a handheld kind of a thing, you know, and not add all these, you know, bells and whistles to it. And that that started to lead us to the, the Ursa, but then it was like, well, maybe there's room for something a little bit smaller that can go from, from tripod to shoulder, 
and uh, you know become a more of an action sort of a camera, you know, documentary style, single user. This is more like a two or three guys working on a on a on a larger project. Where this is so when we designed the, the mini, it still has the dual CFast recording, but we have uh, this handle that can, uh, when you add the, the, the tripod mount, uh, you can have this arm that you can kind of rig it out. And of course, we introduced our new Ursa viewfinder. So that helps too, not only with the original Ursa, but also with the Ursa Mini. So now you're really kind of kidding it out with, with Blackmagic uh, product that's all designed to fit together and screw in together properly. So uh, th this is a, an interesting fit because it doesn't really, it certainly doesn't replace this one, be, Ursa, because Ursa can do up to 120 frames per second, you know, whereas the Mini can only go up to 60. Right. So there are some, it's not an upgradable sensor, but it's also a lower cost product. It starts at $3,000 for the 4K sensor. So it's the same price as the production 4K, but we still think that people will want the production 4K because they like that you know, body, but this uh, new Mini kind of fits in a different space. So I, I really like the idea that we kind of expanded and we didn't limit it. We didn't say, oh, it's only 4K. We were gonna put the 4.6K in it as well. Fantastic. So the, the main functionality difference is, is the higher frame rate, but it's the, it's a similar sensor or the same sensor? So the same sensor, it's just the, the capability uh, is restricted based on, you know, cooling and, and the, you know, and whatnot. So the, there's just limits there. But yeah, it's the same. So what, what's great about that, no matter what sensor, you, you know, we both have 4.6K in Ursa and Ursa Mini, you're going to get, you know, the same uh, dynamic range and same image quality. Okay, fantastic. I also want to thank you for really listening to the users. I feel like, you know, you guys are very good at that. You know, there's always updates, there's always things, you're always listening. For example, the um, shoulder mm. thing, now that you don't have to take it off to put right. the plate on, now they Absolutely. both go, and that's a, that's, a big, that's a big change, so yeah. we really do appreciate that. Okay, so let's talk now slightly about this, uh, quickly about this viewfinder. Mm. I see a little USB port, so I'm assuming this is going to be firmware updatable as well. Absolutely. Great. You know, and, and it, it's an OLED, uh, high quality OLED uh, um, viewfinder. So it has uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution. It's really has an optic, optical quality to it. And there's going to be, there's a chart in there so you can focus. Uh, so it had peaking, it has a zoom for oh, focus. Yeah, right, but I'm, I'm saying that you can, there's a, a, a digital chart you can pull up to make sure that you have focus set before you decide to focus an image. You know, so that you can set your eye diameter where you, you know, Fantastic. if I'm wearing glasses, I would wear it in a different place. If I have my contacts in, I would need to focus it in a different way. So you need to focus on the chart first to make sure you're in focus before you start shooting. And that's very competitively priced as well? Oh, yes, $14.95, uh, so $1,500. And um, it, it has the, you know, power cable and, and uh, the SDI that comes off. So this is, this is powered by, can we spin this around? Yeah, sure. This is powered uh, for people who are wondering at home by the, the right here. The 12 volt yeah, out. 12 volt out here and <coughs> the SDI out, so you're able to uh, get get everything you need. What's the power draw on that? I'm not sure that we have any. It's not finished yet, so I don't know uh, if we have. Uh, okay, sure. Yet. Great. So um, let's move on tally now. Light. It's what? <laughs> Got a tally light too, if you're recording. A tally light, very yeah. good. And it flips up every which way. Absolutely, yeah. It uh -huh. flips up. It also has this. If you see where your thumb is. That is a sensor here, so if uh, the OLED will shut itself off, it's not being used for a while, so it preserves the OLED. Fantastic. So you just wake it up by waving your hand under there. And, you're, you're and I gotta tell the people watching at home, I was using the sensor earlier, I mean the sensor, this uh, viewfinder earlier, and it, the picture is beautiful. I don't see a pixel. Oh, right. I, it's, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. So those of you who have been missing that EVF, I think this is, this is, this is the one for you. So let's move on now, let's talk about the uh, Blackmagic Video Assist. Yeah. Um, uh, again, this is a five-inch screen, touch, touch screen, screen. Touch screen. With the a, inputs are uh, HDSDI and HDMI. Correct. Fantastic. Uh, both in and out, and you have a uh, an SD card uh, recorder, so you can record um, uh, ProRes uh, HD. Uh, it has two batteries in the back, uh, so it can uh, that are hop swappable. So if you're as you're drawing one down, you can put a new battery on. It'll always draw from the lowest uh, powered battery, so that you get you know the the, the correct amount of uh, battery life that way. You know, if you want to drain an indicator them. light telling you which battery. Yeah, there's a, there'll be uh, an indicator as to where you you know which one you should swap. That would be horrible if you didn't. Uh, you know, so that yeah, and it's got a it's got a display on the front, and we're not going to ship it for a little while, so we'll have some more software things to do and it will do ProRes HQ yeah so the, the full HD. and and DV uh, 
uh, DNX HD. Uh, I think we it may, yeah, I think it's going to do DNX HD too, but it does, it'll do the, the, the range of ProRes. Uh, Perfect. So the people who have maybe other camera solutions and they've been interested in yeah. in Atomos or something like this, this is a this is a ProRes recorder. Correct, and it's you know four hundred ninety five dollars. I think one of the other good uses is if you're recording raw in this camera, say you could also attach that uh, device, uh, record ProRes proxies or something. So then you have editing. options. Right. Yeah, you have options. You know, if you had a couple of them, you could say here. You take your, you know, your dailies home. You do your dailies home here. We'll take the CPAS and put them in a safe place, and not have to do the data wrangling that sometimes you get. That's fantastic. So if you're on a job and you're undecided, maybe I, maybe I want raw, maybe I just want ProRes. At the end of the day, you can say you, can you have both. And is that a 10-bit recorder? Yeah. 10-bit yes. recorder, and the price 495. 495. It's 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 amazing. It's amazing. It makes us very happy. I'm glad. Um, <laughs> excuse me. And then finally, the last one in your lineup, the the I should say, not the last one, number 30, 36 yeah, right, of 38 right, right. that you've released is this little mini camera. And yeah. it's called the Micro Cinema Camera. The Micro Cinema Camera. So that has uh, an SD card uh, recording device in it as well. Uh, it'll do HD, uh, the ProRes HD, and RAW. Max is a 1080. Uh, well, uh, yes. Well, actually, it'll do RAW, 1080 RAW. 1080 RAW as well. Yeah, so. Okay. And what you're doing, what we're providing here, and it'll do up to 60 frames per second. So. Uh, in uh, rolling shutter, 30 frames in global shutter. So what you're able to do with that is uh, put it in all kinds of places that people were kind of sticking um, the, uh, the the original uh, uh, pocket camera in, mm -hmm. but when there's a screen in the back, you can't tell whether it's on or not, so we put a red light in the front, so when you hit the button on the front, you know it's recording. If I mount one on my chest and one on your chest, we can tell whether they're recording or not, and it's just, uh, we'll put it in a drone. We put it. What's the weight on it? Uh, it's about 300 grams, so it's uh, really it's about 10, in 10 ounces or whatever. 10 ounces, wow. Yeah, so it's a good size steak, but that's about it. And it's so small that, if, say you're on stage and you want to do an uh, innovative shot, maybe where a big camera wouldn't fit, right. that fits the bill. Right, and, that, and, you know, and if it's in a car and, and, and all these things. So action type uh, shooting, you know, where you have a small camera, but you're getting 13 stops of dynamic range, and you have, you know, multiple camera uh, lens choices, you know, the micro four thirds mount. So, it, and it has uh, the ability to be controlled uh, remotely with the uh, breakout pin. So, if you're uh, using it in a, in, a, in a copter or whatever, you can uh, design it to uh, um, start and stop with uh, RF uh, dip commands. Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's see, what am I missing in your lineup here? Big, big update to Resolve. I was going to say, big update to Resolve. Resolve 12, uh, one of our biggest updates ever on it. Uh, 80 new features. It's got multicam editing support. We, you know, we can do uh, so the full range of it. A lot more options for sort of an NLE type feel. Yeah, exactly. And you know, what does that bring to us? Well, sure, you can use it as a standalone if you want to, but it also helps us inter, you know, do the interchange between the other NLEs. You know, our round tripping gets better and better because. Look, we know not everybody wants to move to Resolve for editing, and but if you're going to finish it in Resolve, you got to be able to, to do that Tweak round tripping. Tweak it, yeah, yeah, exactly. So this way the round tripping is, is solid. Uh, audio support, we can output for Pro Tools export, and, uh, and, and just a lot of good finessing of the, of the user interface and uh, 3D perspective tracking. There's been a lot of great updates. Fantastic. Getting back to the Ursa for one second, mm -hmm. can you talk about its global shutter up to a certain point and then rolling shutter after that? T tell us about that. Right. So it, uh, it'll go. Uh, the new sensor will do up to um, uh, 60 frames per yeah 60 frames per second in global shutter and then up to 120 in rolling shutter. And this preserves your dynamic range that way rather than um, you know a compromise. Because the rolling shutter would actually give you better better low light. Uh, more light would come in because more of more light would come in, right? But um, but the, the global work, the 15 stops really helps you. But you don't want to reduce it significantly by keeping it in global above a certain uh, frame rate. Excellent. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, it's always a pleasure. You know, I have to say, from all of our uh, users and people who watch. You guys are consistently an innovative company, you're easy to talk to, mm -hmm. and your pricing is fantastic. You know, obviously we both know you could be charging five times the amount for this and people would buy it, but you're bringing it into and you're opening opening the gates so that, that people can af afford a fantastic product. Yeah, and you're not skimping on it. Right, we want to enable the masses with high quality products and that's what we're doing. Okay, great, thanks for your time, Bob. Thank you. Okay, so again, I'm Noah Clark for Ursacam, and we're here at uh, 2015 NAB, and that's it for now. Bye-bye.